Good afternoon. Um, I am Joana Moreira da Silva. I am a postdoctoral fellow at the Three Bs Research Group. I think you should have listened to the Rui Reis talk this morning. So it's this amazing group. Uh, so I'm going to talk a bit of uh, my graduation, uh, my first scholarship, a bit of my PhD, and then the more important thing is my working at Three Bs. So, um, so I have. Uh, uh, I am a marine biology, working now in the field of. Uh, biomedical applications and in tissue engineering. Uh, but my graduation is in aquatic sciences. Um, I did it in, in Porto, Portugal, in the Institute of Biomedical Sciences of the University of Porto. During my graduation, I did a small uh, project with a teacher. So I asked him if I could work with him in the immunology, in his immunology group. And we worked with um, with the sea bass and, and the work was basically um, immunology. Still during my graduation I was a lecturer of environmental education as a part-time in a, an aquarium near my city. Uh, still during my graduation I did the, um, the, the thesis project was on the behavioral responses of the grey mullet uh, to progressive hypoxia, and this was done in Italy, in, in the EMG in Sardinia. Um, and I had this uh, paper, so the idea was to study the hypoxia effect on the increasing of the gulping uh, behavior of the mullet, and also uh, the increasing of the, of the ventilation fre frequency. So after this, just immediately after finishing my graduation, I start working as a technician in in the in, in a project in the EBMC. It's a group in Porto, and and here I worked in this project, intraperitoneal immunopathological reactions, following a vaccination also in in CBAS. And here the idea was to to test different adjuvants with the vaccines and trying to, to understand which was the, the best one. <coughs> and also it came this, out this uh, paper. And then as a PhD, I did my PhD at CIMAR, uh, a research center in, in Porto. And the, the PhD was on, on this uh, fish, this weather lodge that is Misgurnus angelicalatus, and this fish is very interesting because it inhabits streams, ponds, and rice fields, and that are, um, that have high loads of uh, um, environmental ammonia, and also this fish is subjected to aerial exposure, uh, making him a facultative air breather, but also making it harder or not the usual way of excreting ammonia and th the, the thing is that he has ways of excreting ammonia through uh, volatilization through the gills and through the gut and this was what I studied. So in my first year of the PhD I went to Hong Kong and I did some immunohistochemistry uh, studies and the idea was to study transporters, important transporters for uh, ammonia excretion. In my second year, Rita was born, and so I went nowhere. <laughs> and then in the, in the third year, I went to Waterloo uh, University in Canada, and I worked with Matt Fiji, and, and I did some studies of membrane fluidity of gills and of gut to try to understand if with high loads of ammonia, the membrane fluidity would in, increase, meaning that uh, it would turn more permeable to, to ammonia. In the last year, I went to, to Denmark, where I did some, I, some studies with re respirometry, 
and probably we are not seeing this very well. But, so the idea was to understand if ammonia would change um, standard metabolic rate, and it did change. Um, and then I finished my PhD, and I had two more papers, and I still have three more to come, but it's turning a bit harder. Um, so now talking of the more interesting thing that is uh, working at the 3B's research group, that is this biomaterials, biodegradables, and biomimetics is in the University of Minho, Portugal. So I am a marine biology biologist, and um, in the, and I am working in this uh, group where the, the focus is tissue engineering and tissue uh, regeneration. And at the beginning, if you if you see it, like it, it studies uh, biomaterials, and this is uh, where I enter uh, studying materials from the sea that can be used in tissue engineering. And so I'm going to talk about the, the potential of marine ecology for tissue engineering strategies. And the, the collagen is uh, for tissue engineering is an important biomaterial. And collagen is the main protein in, in uh, animal conjunctive tissues, is the most abundant protein. And it's biodegradable. And also it has a weak an antigenicity, which it makes a good material for tissue engineering applications. Also has a high variability in constitution, making it, um, since it has several types of collagen, also has different types of applications. And the, here it comes, the marine collagen. And its uh, importance is uh, the, the, the traditional sources of collagen nowadays are calf and pork bones and skins, and, and they have these uh, problems with diseases and, and, and religious problems, and marine collagen should be um, a, a source to overcome these type of problems. So collagen can be obtained from different marine sources, and these are fish skins, bones, and scales, but also from uh, jellyfish, from sea animals, from squids, and from sponges. And now I'm going to speak a bit of the collagen extracted from marine sponges, and this uh, is maybe a bit interconnected with what uh, Marina has exposed before, since this work was done in collaboration with Marco. Um, so the, the collagen was extracted from Condrosia, and we did a um, direct contact test to, to, to evaluate its cytotoxicity, and for this we used adherence and an adherent plates, and we coated the the collagen, and then we used um, a cell line, L929, to, to evaluate this cytotoxicity. So this MTS assay is an assay to, to see cell metabolic activity. So these are the adherent plates, and these are the non-adherent plates. So we don't, hear, we don't see here the negative controls that are latex, and it's what it's killing everything. The, the red ones are the positive control, and the white one is our chondrosia collagen. And what we can see here is that uh, in the non-adherent plates, the, the, the wells that were, well, the, the, the cells that were cultured in, um, with the coating of collagen, uh, or the collagen promoted the, the cell growth, as you can see here, is uh, significantly different. So we have more cells in the plates coated with collagen, which is an interesting result. This is the DNA quantification assay that would measure cell proliferation, it's, and it's just to confirm the MTS assay, so it's concordant with that. Um, we can have collagen not only from marine sponges, 
as I said before. And so we have been working also with collagen extracted from shark skin. Um, and for this, we already produced some, some structures, and these uh, structures were cross-linked with Jennypin. So here we see some hydrogel, and the blue is uh, meaning that the cross-linking was effective. And this is a, a scaffold, a porous structure, where we can see the blue also. It means that it's uh, cross-linked. And so um, what I would like to emphasize is that uh, with marine collagen from different sources, that, and then we will test uh, other marine sponges for extracting collagen, and we will do further more structures and, and, and test them with cells, is that the marine collagen has this potential use in different tissue engineering structures, and, and we can indeed use it uh, with good results. And that's it. Thank you.